So welcome to the uh, introduction to FC NVMe, which, uh, if you don't, don't know the acronym, is a uh, fiber channel over um, NVMe, NVMe Express. I'm sorry, other way around, NVMe Express for a fiber channel. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm Craig Carlson. I'm with Cavium. I'm, um, ch I chair uh, the uh, FC NVMe working group within uh, T11. Um, I also do some other things in, in the industry. I also want to thank uh, Jay Metz of Cisco for contributions to the slide deck, as well as to, uh, as to taking one of the only pictures of myself I actually like. So the agenda for, for uh, this talk is we're going to do uh, some refreshers on a background on FC Fiber Channel and on NVMe. And then we're going to go into um, what uh, FC NVMe is itself and then also a, uh, a short uh, section on why you might want to use FC NVMe. So just, just, some, ground, just some ground work here. This, this presentation is a uh, reminder of how fiber channel work, works, how uh, NVMe fabrics works, and a high level overview of um, fiber channel NVMe and how they work together. What we're not going to do uh, today is do a, a technical deep dive, uh, no boiling the ocean, um, and we're not going to do a comparison of um, NVMe or fabrics, um, other methods of doing NVMe or fabrics. Um, if you have any further questions, if you want to get a deep di deeper dive, you can come and ask me, and I can give you all. I can bore you as much as you want, and give you all the details you want. Uh, just come find me in the hallway. So, a fiber channel. So, what is fiber channel? I'm sure a lot of you here already know or have some experience with Fiber Channel. But um, Fiber Channel is a, a purpose built for storage. Um, it's a high speed connection between a host and a storage. And it's a logical protocol also between the host and the storage. So, what were some of the design requirements that went into making Fiber Channel in the first place? Um, one of the primary design requirements was a one-to-one -one connectivity. Even though you're on a network, distributed network or a fabric, um, the devices and, and the hosts in storage really act like they're uh, connected one-to-one. -one. Also, transport and services are on the same layer. We don't have um, different uh, protocols on top to do, uh, like TCP, where you have different uh, layers. Uh, we do have layers, but not as many as that. So most stuff is on the same layer. There's also a well-defined end-device relationship, initiator and targets. Um, this comes from SCSI. And um, the, there is no built-in packet drop. Now, of course, things, things happen. Packets can be, can be corrupted and things can drop. But there is no uh, congestion management procedures where packets get dropped or anything like that. There's only, uh, really only traffic, north-south traffic, meaning traffic between uh, uh, hosts and the storage devices. And the a fire channel network is also optimized for high availability. Um, you can have multiple paths through, any, through a fabric. And um, there's also services built in. And I'll go into that in a second. So a basic fiber channel um, um, configuration looks like this. You have an initiator which uh, is your host. You have your uh, fabric in between, and of course you have your storage device. So for fiber channel, um, the initiator um, contains something called the, the HBA, host bus adapter. Um, in other words, in other, in other network technologies, this is called NIC in, in terms of eth in, in Ethernet world. Um, this is where the protocols um, it encapsulated in the fiber channel frames. And then, the, uh, of course, the fabric, um, which is a um, set of switches, one or more switches. Um, and the uh, fabric has, uh, in fiber channel, has a lot of intelligence. It has something called the name server, which is the repository of all the information. Um, it's, it's implemented in, in the fabric as a redundant distributed network. So there's no single point of failure. And um, every single device that um, logs into the fabric is registered in, this, in the name server. So if our channel usually 
typically uses a uh, unacknowledged datagram class of service. This is known in class, as class three. Um, it's defined as a reliable datagram, meaning it won't be dropped. For It won't be dropped for congestion reasons like that. If you get a bit error, frames can get dropped. Stuff happens, but it won't be dropped as a matter of, 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 the, of the protocol. And within the a fiber channel data transfer, there are three fundamental constructs. There are frames, which is a packet of data, sequences, which is a, a, a set of frames collected together, and exchanges, which, um, depending on the protocols, is many times associated with a command response tied together. So for a frame, each unit um, is 2112 bytes, and that consists of a, a fiber channel header, a payload, and a CRC. And then multiple sequences can be bundled together. I'm oh, sorry, multiple frames can be bundled together into a sequence, and this allows you to, to transfer um, large amounts of data, megabytes, gigabytes, what have you. And then an interaction between fiber, two fiber channel points is bundled into a, an, something called an exchange. Um, and for protocols like a SCSI and FC and VME, an exchange is mapped to a single command response. So the important thing that, about exchanges is in fiber channel, the frames within the individual exchange are guaranteed to, to be delivered with, in order. Exchanges themselves, individual exchanges, may be delivered out of order in the fabric so that the fabric can take advantage of any um, optimizations in paths um, that may exist between switches. So what that means is um, different commands can take different commit paths to the fabric so they can be delivered in, in, diff in a different order that they were sent. And as I mentioned before, the other thing that um, Fiber Channel has is a discovery layer, which is handled with the name server. And the name server contains information such as worldwide names of all devices, um, the port IDs that they exist on, what type of device they are, so on and so forth. And the Fabric also provides a um, service called zoning, which allows um, ports to be separated from each other. Um, it's a security method. It's also a, a data integrity method so that you don't have uh, devices or hosts messing with your storage that you don't want them to touch. And zoning is implemented um, in each switch in the fabric in a distributed fashion as well. So it's also high availability. So if you look at the layer that exists in Fiber Channel, um, you have, at the lowest level layer, you have FC0, which is the physical layer, which is the, um, the uh, bits and photons. And then you have the FC1 layer, which is the encoding, um, which is, in any high-speed network, if, if anybody's looked at the, how networks work these days, because we're pushing so much data through um, copper that sometimes can't really handle it, there's a lot of encoding that goes in, in, into it for um, error recovery uh, and, and, and correcting bit errors. Then above the byte encoding layer, you have the framing, in, uh, framing layer. And then you have the services. The FC3 is the services, uh, which is the name server, um, zoning server. And then uh, FC4 is the upper layer, which is the protocols, which would be SCSI, uh, FC, NVMe, FICON, what have you. So what is, there's one thing that, one term that keeps on getting brought up um, in, 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 in Fiber Channel discussion is FCP. And so what is FCP? Um, FCP was traditionally or historically defined to, to, to carry one storage protocol and that was SCSI. Um, and since that time, it's been um, adapted to carry other storage protocols. So FCP is really has evolved into a, a data transfer protocol which can carry SCSI, I can carry FICON, um, and now 
we've been using it for SC and VB as well. And the reason the reason that we um, we we do that is because the uh, fabric and the uh, HPAs have um, optimized paths for FCP, so it allows us to take advantage of existing optimizations. So onto a NVMe, quick NVMe refresher. So um, NVMe stands for um, Non-Volatile Memory Express. Um, it began as a PCIe attached storage protocol. Um, excuse me, many of you in this room probably are having, if you have one of these, these laptops, the Apple, the newest Apples have NVMe Express drives in them. And I know a lot of other uh, laptops do now. And about two or three years ago, there was a project within the NVMe group to define a fabric um, method of sending the data. And so NVMe over fabrics was born. And the NVMe over fabrics itself is a generic set of tools to extend NVMe over fabric. The initial fabrics that were defined are RDMA-based fabric, fabric protocols in Fiber Channel. So some basics on, on NVMe. Um, different layers are, so you, should, you have, of course, drivers. Um, and um, you know, you, for inbox NVMe devices, um, you have one set of drivers. And of course, for the, uh, fiber, the uh, fabric uh, NVMe devices, those will require new drivers, which the, the group is working on right now. And, and a lot of them have been pushed into the um, upstream kernel for, for Linux and, and, and are also being ported to other operating systems. The next layer um, is the subsystem. And um, a subsystem is really a what contain, what's contained in, in a storage device. And it contains the controllers, the media, namespaces, and interfaces. Our controller is, of course, what you would expect it to be. It's the actual entity that executes the commands and returns the responses, and manages the, manages the storage. And within, within the preview of a controller are the namespaces, um, which are the actual um, storage extents, which is the, uh, the actual uh, disk, equivalent to a disk image or a disk. And the one thing that NVMe uh, has um, uh, over other storage protocols is a um, very deep set of queuing and a large set of que uh, possible queues that can be associated with any particular set of controllers. And so the important thing about NVMe is maintaining this queue um, method uh, so that you have large amounts of queues which are associated with any with one, one, any particular controller. So if you look at the a taxonomy of the uh, um, transport, uh, NVMe itself was defined as a, a memory-based model. Um, now, of course, you can't, even in our RDMA, you can't use memory-based models in uh, a fabric because the data still has to be moved over the fabric. So fabrics evolve into a message pace, pace model. And um, Fiber Channel um, maps the NVMe data, of course, onto um, Fiber Channel frames. And I mentioned, as I mentioned, the uh, um, Q pairs are important um, in NVMe. So in order to, um, to port NVMe under Fabric, you have to have a method for porting the Q pairs across the Fabric. And so the NVMe or Fabrics um, definition has a, a set of uh, commands and a set of uh, methods for um, maintaining the, the queues across the Fabric, which, which, were, which were before in, in local memory and now are, are spread across a network. So for FCMDME, in this section we're going to look at a high-level understanding of how it works. 
and understand how SCP can be used to map uh, MVME to fiber channel. So when we were, de when we were de designing uh, FC and VME, we had some goals. Um, first off, we wanted to comply with the MVME over fabric spec. And of course, uh, we wanted to maintain uh, high performance, low latency. Uh, MVME, of course, is, is a low latency protocol, um, and so we wanted to maintain that. So in order to do this, we want to use existing, we also want to use existing HP and switch hardware. We didn't want to um, uh, require A6 respond to uh, implement MVM, FC NVMe. And we wanted to fit into the existing fiber channel infrastructure, um, uh, management and name server, and, and, and all those other things that exist for, for other fiber channel protocols. And we wanted to be able to pass the uh, NVMe commands with little or no interaction from the entire fiber channel layer. And of course, um, name server zoning management comes, comes with it. So high performance, low latency. Um, in order to maintain or maintain parity with existing protocols and improve on existing, existing protocols too, we need to use the same tools. So, we wanted to keep the same hardware acceleration that exists for, um, for, say, for SCSI. And Fiber Channel does not have an RDMA protocol, so we use uh, FCP as a data transfer. Currently, both uh, SCSI and FICON use uh, FCP. And FCP is de deployed in many, if not all, uh, implementations as a hardware accelerated layer. So to map them to FCP, we have to map the uh, um, MVME command response uh, data onto uh, fiber channel FCP frames. And an MVME IO operation is dr mapped directly into a fiber channel exchange. So that means that a single read operation would be one exchange. So for example, if you take a, a SQE, which stands for a submission queue entry, a submission queue entry in NVMe is the um, basically a command. It's 64 bytes long, and it's the entry that's put on the queue that tells the controller what to do. So the first step is to map one of these SQEs into a FCP command IU. And then if that um, command results in any data transfer, of course, then the data has to be mapped into FCP data IUs. And the data IU portion is what is accelerated by hardware. The hardware engines um, will automatically transfer across, transfer across the, um, the fiber channel network, place into memory, um, so that there's no software handling of the data in, 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 in when it's in progress. And then, of, and then the, uh, of course, the uh, response, which is the CQE, which is, com uh, stands for uh, completion queue entry, is mapped into the FCP response IU. And then the uh, transactions for a particular IO are bundled into an exchange. So um, in this example, for example, you have a read operation, which is a single exchange, and a write operation, which is a single exchange. And one thing I keep on hearing about um, FCP is, well, how do you do zero copy? Um, RDMA was designed to allow network protocols to do zero copy implementations easily. Um, the fact is that FCP has been doing that for 20 years. It just wasn't called RDMA. FCP. Um, current implementations going back 20 years have been doing zero copy. So you don't need to have RDMA in order to do zero copy. RDMA is a set of tools, a semantics that make it easier to do zero copy, but it's not required. And so really the difference is the, the, difference is the APIs. So for RDMA, you have a defined set of APIs that enforce or make it easier to do zero copy. Where FCP, it's the implementation 
Who should I say? So, for example, if you look at the uh, um, transactions that take place on the wire, um, FCP transactions, uh, the ladder diagram here, we have a, um, a read and a write um, operation taking place at the bottom. And if you look at the same operation done with RDMA, you have the, basically the same flow of commands. You still have, you, no, no matter what you're doing on the wire, you still have to um, send a command, get the data, or, um, or send the command and wait for the, uh, the other side to say, I'm ready for the data. So that it's, it's basically the same operation at the lower level. And of course, the other thing that is important um, is to maintain discovery discovery mechanisms with an FCNDME. And in order to facilitate that, we use both, we use pieces from both, 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 both layers. Um, we use the fiber channel name server to do the discovery of the ports. So we, we can go out and say, what are the NVMe ports out here? And once we find them, then we can use the NVMe discovery controller, um, which, um, knows the details about the subsystems which exist in the um, NVMe um, devices. And so this allows each component to manage the, the, uh, the data that it, that it has the most knowledge about. So for example, uh, um, for an FC NVMe in initiator to connect, um, the uh, first thing it will do is go to the, the name server, the fiber channel name server. And it will identify where the discovery controllers are. And then it will go talk to the discovery controller, which identifies the subsystems that it can talk to. And then once it has that, then it can start talking directly to the storage devices. Is that for every exchange or just for the... That's, that's, that happens during initialization. Yeah, that would, that would happen once for each um, initiator target pair. And then once you have, once you have, have that, unless something changes in the fabric, if something changes in the fabric, then you'll get a notification, you have to, redo, you have to do it again. And of course, um, the, uh, the zoning and uh, management server and other service mechanisms continue to work um, with FCMME. So why do you want to use it? So one, you know, the, the key, I think the key thing about Fiber Channel is it's a dedicated storage network. It's not sharing resources with anybody else. It's not sharing administrators with anybody else. It's a dedicated storage network. You can also uh, you run uh, NVMe and SCSI side by side on the same wire. Uh, a lot of the implementations that exist right now can run both protocols simultaneously on the same port uh, on, from an HPA into the switch. Fire Channel's been around for a while. Um, the, uh, all the testing that has gone into making Fire Channel a uh, enterprise storage uh, solution the last 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, um, continues to be um, there for FC and VME because we're not, we're keeping the same data transfer layer, we're keeping the same fabric, we're, we're touching as little as we can in the path. The question? When you say, and then the idea is because it's not only side by side, you need a fiber channel. The fiber channel is on side by side because. So here's so here's 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 where here. Um, you have a fiber channel cable. You're running NVMe on top of FCP. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So when you say it's SCSI side by side, you mean I can run NVMe on FCP and fiber channel on the same cable? Well, fiber channel is not SCSI. Fiber channel protocol. Fiber um, channel. Fiber channel. Yeah. If you if you if you're taking the the the, the traditional. The, def the original definition of FCP, which is it's SCSI, you're right. So what I'm saying is you can run um, NVMe, which is running over FCP, 
side by side of SCSI, which is running over FCP on the same wire. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. And then, of course, the uh, uh, built in zoning security for fiber channel remains in place. No, that, of course, that picture is not a good example of security. But <laughs> And um, there has been a, a lot of uh, qualification of fiber channel devices, and the idea for deployment is that not, while a change is required, um, it, it's not a hardware change, it's a firmware change. So, so the, the change is adding the queues to the APA and stuff like that? It's a bit more complicated than that. Um, you know, it is a different protocol, so it does require a, uh, a change to the firmware to understand yeah. the the commands what and responses. Add the, add the, uh, the, the queues, yes, and it depends on the implementation. A lot, so a lot of times the queues are are, are are stored in the hosts. Sometimes they may be in the um, controller adapter itself. It really depends on the implementation. Okay, so you can tell this slide was, was written by, by Jay, who's the marketing guy. Um, <laughs> so SCME, uh, wicked fast. Um, it, it builds on top of Fiber Channel, which is, it, which is fast, too. We're, we're looking at 64-gigabit uh, um, 64 64 gigabit Fiber Channel right now. Currently, 32-gigabit uh, Fiber Channel is in the field. So Fiber Channel remains, to be, remains one of the fastest storage networks that you can you can um, deploy. Um, it builds on uh, 20 years of uh, of the storage network experience. Um, it can be run side by side with existing SCSI based fiber uh, fiber channel storage, and actually you can run it side by side um, with FICON too, because they're, they're all layers on top of the um, existing protocols. Um, it heritage the benefits of the discovery and name services from fiber channel. And um, it, it capitalizes on the uh, existing qualification of the devices that exist out there. So more info, info you can go to fiberchannel.org. You can my, my email is up there. If you want to talk to me, you can talk to me in the hallway. Uh, any questions? Can you summarize? Can you describe why do you need to be compatible with MDM or with this um, because the well, it's it. Because we want to work with the existing infrastructure, people are, are defining um, uh, or designing devices that, in particular, large uh, flash all flash arrays, which do NVMe over fabrics, and the interface type then becomes possibly a pluggable module. You can put RDMA in there, or you can put fiber channel in there. But the protocol that the device is is, is talking is in newer fabrics, so we want to maintain that um, that compatibility of existing but existing emerging devices. Does that make sense? Any yeah. question? Yeah, a significant number of uh, organizations, maybe a uh, fifty percent or better of the Fortune one hundred, are running uh, fiber channel protocol and SCSI over. FCP of the same directors. Mm -hmm. Would the fact that we already have two protocols running on top of FCP preclude adding the third, or is, is the only no? No. Oh. no, it's it's you can run um, you know with with com with a compatible storage and an update to the uh, um, HPAs. You can run NVMe side by side with SCSI. And FICON, if you have it in, the, in that data center. And, and considering that those directors are on the ground in so many organizations, whether they're running FICON or just SCSI or some combination, it, is this a protocol and is this a code update to that hardware? What, what? So, are you, are you talking about when you, when you talk about the directors? Are you talking? Are you talking about the switches themselves, the fi the, the, the the fabric itself? Well, let's say, uh, let's say we have Cisco ninety five oh nine. So, and, and so we're running. Let's say just discuss. What, so, so for how the do we, how do we upgrade that? so for a switch, um, there really is no change. Uh, it, it's data, it's frames. 
Now, some switches do have additional um, um, layers that do some traffic analysis and things like that. You may have to update that to get the new functionality, but in order to pass to send the data, the switch doesn't have to change at all. So the directors don't have to change at all in order to send NVMe. It's it's really it's really a heavier lift on the HPA and and, and storage side to make that work. And another question I have is we have now we have the appearance of companies like Vexata here in the Valley with super fast uh, NVMe NVMe storage arrays, mm -hmm. very unique architectures, and, you know, running six million IL ops uh, with good workloads with 8K block sizes, like unbelievable performance. What kind of if we connect? two Vexata type arrays or equivalents over distance, what kind of performance? Do you have some comparison? Because today we're using fiber channel for that. Okay, so I I did not bring any fiber, any, any, this is meant to be a bit the tutorial, so I didn't bring any specific vendor performance numbers. One thing I can say, you know, you're not going to speed up the, the network storage or the network performance by running a different protocol. The latency in the network is going to be the same no matter what you're running. Um, what you gain on, on is on the endpoints, and you gain a, a lower latency in the NVMe stack. And, 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 and NVMe has much has a possibility of much deeper queues. Well, that's what? Deeper queues. Uh, you can have 64,000 queues of 64,000 entries. And that's where, in some cases, we're seeing some big performance improvements because you're able to use the aggregate bandwidth of the, of the fabric much more effectively. So you're picking up parallelism? Exactly, okay. yeah. And Do you have any benchmarks or anything? I, I don't have any I can show you right now, sorry. I, if you if you want to um, talk to me offline, um, I, can, I can provide you with some, some pointers. Okay. I didn't include any in this slide deck, so. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Yes. So, I guess what's not making sense in my head is it, RDMA is pretty much uh, it reverses the role of the initiator and target and data transfer, right? Because when you're using SCSI, mm -hmm. you issue a uh, transfer ready, and then the data gets written out. But in RDMA, it's a read from the target mm -hmm. back to the the queue. Isn't that I, I don't know. It seems like it's, it's... So I'm not sure what your question is. Well, doesn't that conflict with uh, what's existing in FCP? It seems to me that... Uh, isn't that a difficult thing to do without changing your lower layers? Well, we're not, we're, not, we're not trying to work like RDMA, but if you look at the lower layers, yes, the semantics of setting something up, you have to set up your, your regions and you have to... are, are, are very different. But once it, the data starts... Tr going across the wire, it looks the same, because... Um, so it's just a semantic change, and, the, and the, basically the frames look the same as on the wire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, of course, between different protocols, you know, you have different, obviously different frames, but the data transactions look the same on the wires. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Well, I'd probably, you'd probably have to, you know, I'd have to look at it in more detail. Okay. <laughs> wow. Any other questions? All right, thank you.